you can see here from the wall of sweet peas that are now emerging behind me that some of them have reached the top of their supports so now we're going to stop them now stopping is just like pinching but i'm not going to call it pinching because that's just confusing so stopping your sweet peas is just to stop them climbing any higher the first time that we ever did this we were so nervous that neil kept putting on extensions this is before we had the roof he kept putting on extensions and extensions and they kept climbing higher and higher and eventually we needed a step ladder to pick the sweet peas before we had the courage to cut the tops now the reason that you want to cut the tops is if you just allow them to climb higher and higher and they can easily get to 12 feet what will happen is the side shoots so it's just the same as pinching you've got to take out the apical dominance the side shoots are not able to wake up because they're on the climb upwards so we're going to stop them by taking out that apical dominance the side shoots will wake up and that's how you achieve the wall of sweet peas. Now, the saying goes that the more you pick sweet peas, the more they flower. But that's not actually true. They only flower in the same spot once. So the idea is by stopping them and then allowing them to branch now they're really tall and you've got the longest stems, they are able to then create more side shoots and each of those side shoots will then produce a flower bud. Now, if you joined in the Grow Along and like us, you've not yet pinched your sweet peas, you're most likely experiencing the longest flowering stems of your life. Look at those. Absolutely incredible. Got a nice bit of sunshine now. So here is spring sunshine white and you can see they're blooming on exceptionally long stems because we didn't pinch them. And then these are the first of the side shoots starting to wake up and that's going to produce a flower. But then that's going to be the only flower. So once this flower is picked, then this stem will grow right to the top, flowering all the way up as it goes. Eventually, you'll just end up with flowers on the top portion. But if we then stop them and take that out, you'll encourage the side shoots on that stem to all to start to wake up. And so it goes on. Now, every time that a side shoot wakes up, it diverts the plant's energy. So the resulting flowers as we go through the season will slowly get shorter and shorter and shorter, which is why we didn't pinch them in the first instance. We wanted them to get all the way to the top of the frames and produce us blooms on the longest stems. And now we're gonna start the branching process. So over the course of the season, your flowers will get slowly shorter and shorter and shorter. However, because we started from such a good position in the first place, the results of the shorter blooms won't happen until later on in the season. So this is the top of the sweet pea and this is the leaf and the tendril. Here we've got the flower, so we're going to allow that to bloom. And then we've got another flower here, which we will also let allow to bloom. And then here we've got a flower plus the growth shoot. So the growth shoot and the second flower, or the third, we're going to remove and that will essentially stop the plant. There's the new tendril. Ah, and this last little bit here, just in case you're wondering, I was a minute ago, this is the leaf and the tendril. So it's just another one of these. It's not the growth shoot. Although it does look like it, doesn't it? Here we are, we've just taken out the growth shoot and the flower. We'll leave these two to flower. They're pretty close to the roof, so they might not be perfect. <laughs> oh, and the tendril. Just make space. Lovely. Here we are from the other side. And yeah. Neil's gonna go along now and just stop all of these plants. Because otherwise all that's gonna happen is they're gonna curl up into the roof and then the bottom of these plants will start to get really sparse. We want lots of lovely new side shoots. Look at that. So 
So once the plants have been stopped, the side shoots will start to emerge. And look, we're also getting lots of fresh, lush new growth a bit lower down the plant. So this one here is much easier to see because it's got no roof. So once these get to the top, we will also stop those. Each of the side shoots will wake up. Eventually they will get to the top and we'll have to stop those. And then each of those side shoots will get to the top and then we'll have to stop those. And each time the blooms flower on the new side shoots of side shoots of side shoots of side shoots of side shoots, the flowers will slowly get a tiny bit shorter, a tiny bit shorter, a tiny bit shorter. Why don't I show you? There we go. So you can see it isn't a huge amount shorter, just a bit. But when they branch again, it will get that much shorter again. And then it will get that much shorter again. And then it will get that much shorter again. And that's when you need to start cutting tendrils to make your flowers long enough to even put in a jam jar. So hopefully that makes sense why you need to be careful with your pinching and start as early as possible so you get the most amount of long stems. I'm just going to take some pictures of the spring sunshine champagne. She's lovely, isn't she? I'll try her on a white wrap ground. I've already got pictures, but it's a good excuse to take some new ones, isn't it? Look at that. Outstanding. I love her.